hi dear students santosh here and today i am going to deliver my lecture number 3 on wastewater engineering and which deals with sewer appurtenances these appurtenances are very important as far as sewerage system is concerned and every system required the set of appurtenances for their operation and maintenance so let us start the chapter sewer appurtenances before that i am congratulating to those who have subscribed my channel and also requesting the others to subscribe my channel to get ideas cleared in the civil engineering as well as to acquire some simple knowledge regarding civil engineering so let us start my lecture number 3 on वेस्ट वॉटर इंजीनियरिंग और सैनिटरी इंजीनियरिंग एंड विच डील्स विद द सीवर एप्रंटेंसेस सो वाई सीवर एप्रंटेंसेस आर रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज सीवर सिस्टम रिक्वायर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एप्रंटेंसेस फॉर देयर प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग एंड मेंटेनेंस बिकॉज इफ सिंपली सीवर्स आर लेड द सीवेज कैन नॉट फ्लो इन टू इट कंटिन्यूसली फॉर अ लॉन्गर टाइम so for operating the sewage system and for proper functioning these sewer appurtenances are required after some time if sewer appurtenances are not provided the sewage system will be choked up and will require the cleaning of sewers if sewage system will not be maintained properly silt ashes fats oils and greasy matters etc will choke the sewer line so it is very important to provide the sewer appurtenances and these appurtenances are essential and required for operation and proper maintenance of sewerage system and which should be inaccessible to the general public because you know that the sewerage system should not be make open or accessible to all persons so there is possibility of accident so we make it as inaccessible these includes this sewer appurtenances includes manholes lamp holes drop manholes that is type of manhole street inlets flushing tanks catch basins ventilating shafts and storm relief works etc so this chapter deals with various sewer appurtenances so let us discuss first sewer appurtenance that is manhole please look at this figure this figure this is the cross section of manhole and this is the sewer which is provided at the bottom of that manhole and <laughs> these masonry walls or concrete walls are constructed and the steps are provided to get the access to the man entering into the sewer as far as possible these sewers are laid straight at every change of alignment that is very important where the manhole is to be provided at every change of alignment at every change of gradient and at every change in the diameter of the sewer manholes are constructed for giving access into the sewer for inspection cleaning repairs and maintenance manholes are masonry or rcc chambers which are constructed on the top of sewer this is constructed on the top of sewer a manhole essentially consist of a working chamber this is the working chamber then an access shaft this is the access shaft which is provided to get the access and a strong cover on the top flush with the road level why it is flush with the road level otherwise accidents are going to be happened but in several cities including sholapur these strong covers are not flushed with the road level and there is a possibility of accident on each and every road where strong covers provided and are not flush with the 
road level so one must keep into the mind that these covers are flushed with the road level or road top level then we are going to discuss the drop mon drop manholes so so this is one type of manhole which is called as a drop manhole and it is provided when it is uneconomical or impracticable to arrange the connection within 60 cm of the invert of the sewer and a manhole then a vertical shaft is constructed this is the vertical shaft that vertical shaft is constructed outside the manhole chamber through which the sewage of branch sewer is allowed to enter into the manhole so this is the branch <coughs> of sewer which is going through this shaft and going to connect this main sewer if the difference in the level between the branch sewer and main sewer is within 60 cm and there is sufficient roof with within the working chamber the connecting pipe may be directly brought through the manhole wall by providing a ramp in the benching so this shaft sometime provided into the manhole itself then such a manholes which drop the level of invert of incoming sewer by providing a vertical shaft are called as a drop manhole the main purpose being to avoid the splashing of sewage on the main working on the masonry work if that pipe is provided here then there is a splashing of sewer and <coughs> it is going to affect the man working into the manhole so to avoid that this vertical shaft is to be provided the branch sewer line is constructed to the manhole in such a way that it can be cleaned and rodded when necessary so cleaning and rodding of this branch sewer <coughs> can be arranged in the simple and effective way so <coughs> we are going to the third type of sewer apprentices and that is the lamp hole name itself indicates that it is used to provide the lamp in the sewer line in narrow lanes in change in gradient and slight curves where space is insufficient for the construction of manhole so it is provided whenever there is a change in gradient whenever there is a change in alignment and whenever there are slight curves and where whenever there is a difficulty in construction of manholes in such a cases a vertical shaft of 20 to 30 cm diameter is connected to the sewer by means of a t bend so this is the t bend and this is the sewer line and this is the t junction we all know that this small size opening are covered by the ci or rcc cover it is covered with the ci or rcc cover flush with the road level at the top okay when while inspecting a lamp is lowered the lamp is lowered into that vertical shaft and is seen from the manholes on the other side to find the sewer is clean or obstructed the lamp is provided here and washed from this side or this side okay for observing the clearance of that sewer line the lamp holes are also provided at places when regular manholes are placed at longer intervals that is also very important if two manholes are provided at the longer intervals then in middle of that two manholes a lamp hole is to be provided actually in practice during maintenance of the lamp holes are not used therefore most local authorities do not recommend the lamp holes lamp holes in the sewer line okay then four type of sewer apprentices is the street in inlet and which is shown on my thumbnail also street inlets or gullies are the openings in the street curb or gutter to collect the storm water and surface wash water flowing along the streets and convey it into the storm or combined sewer by means of a stoneware pipes of 25 to 30 cm in diameter 
Inlets are placed at road gutters generally at street junctions. These are provided at the street junctions as shown in this figure. These are the street inlets provided. Okay. If the streets are very long, more than 200 meter inlets are also provided at intermediate point at 100 to 130 meter spacing. And this figure, this figure shows the most useful location of street inlet at some common places. All the street junction inlets should be placed in such a way that storm water may not flow across any of the streets or flood the cross walks causing interference with the public. But generally we observe that the storm water is going to affect the regular traffic as well as pedestrians when there is a heavy rain in the city. But if you want to avoid that, you should design the street inlets on proper place with proper capacity. Then we are going to discuss the flushing tanks. Name itself indicates it, it is used to flush the sewer when the velocity is low or self-cleaning velocity is not achieved by the sewage in such a cases these flushing tanks are to be provided when the gradients of the sewer are flat and the velocity of sewage is very low the suspended matter of the sewage starts settling in the bed of the sewer and causes the clogging of the sewer if this is the cross section of the sewer line then this sewage is going to clog the clog this sewer lines or sewer pipes at such a places where self cleaning velocity is not available flushing tanks are to be provided to flush the sewer so self cleaning velocity is not available is important these tanks are usually provided at the beginning point of the sewers these are provided at the beginning point of the sewers may be either automatic or worked by the hand so these flushing tanks are automatic or hand operated Automatic flushing tanks are most commonly used. Please look at this figure. This is the CI cover at the top. This is the water from the mains used for flushing. This is the collection of the water. And this is the U-tube provided for the flushing. This U-tube is used to flush these sewers. And this is the overflow pipe. And this water is again <coughs> going to the sewer. So, one must remember all these figures for descriptive type of examinations. Okay. Then we are going to discuss the catch water basins or pits. Name itself indicates it is used to catch the rain water. These are the small masonry chambers 75 to 90 centimeter in diameter and 75 to 90 centimeter deep which are constructed below the street inlets to prevent the flow of great sand and debris into the sewer line. So catch basins or catch pits are used to prevent the entry of grit sand and debris into the sewer line. So if water is flowing in such a direction then all this grit or a sand or a debris is collected here and it should be removed from here and water goes into this catch basins or a pits and sand is provided at the bottom of, bottom of these pits or sand is going to accumulate here and <coughs> one connection is provided to the manhole. When the storm water enters into these basins, the grit sand etc. settled into the bed. Grit also settled into this bed and storm water free from all these enter into the sewer line. Okay. The outlet pipe of catch basin is fixed about 60 cm above the bottom as shown in the figure. The outlet pipe is provided with a trap to prevent the escape of odor from the sewer to the catch basins. So that is very important. Then similar arrangement for the sand, grease and oil traps. The sewage from the hotels or restaurants, kitchen and industries contains grease, oils and fats which if not removed before it enters into the sewers will stick to the interior surface of the sewer conduit and will become hard and cause obstruction in the movement of the sewage. 
to check them grease traps are required which are placed in the pipe connecting the kitchen with the sewer line figure shows the section through a grease trap this is the grease trap this is the pcc or a bed and <coughs> this is the inlet from where the grease and oil enter into this tank and this is the ci cover provided at the top of this sand grease or oil trap and sewage is flowing in this direction and grease and oil is accumulated at the top and it is not entering into the sewage line or sewer line okay then we are going to discuss the inverted siphon during laying of the sewer lines in the town at some places the hydraulic gradient line falls above the ground surface when the hydraulic line or a hydraulic gradient line falls above the ground surface if there is a more depression in the ground and area is under developed or cultivated sewer line can be laid above the ground by supporting it by the piers as shown here if such a situation is there then we are going to provide the inverted siphon okay but sewer cannot be laid above the ground at such places where road canal and railway lines cross the sewer line to overcome such obstruction in the sewer lines inverted siphon are provided in an inverted siphon the hydraulic gradient line is above the flow line whereas true siphon the hydraulic line is below the flow line the depression is like this but as shown here we are not going to provide the siphon like this we are provide we are going to provide the siphon or inverted siphon like this okay so you must remember that in inverted siphon the hydraulic gradient line is above the flow line inverted siphons are also known as the depressed sewers there is a depression in the sewer this is depressed sewers they are known as a because the sewer portion at such a portion is below the general sewer line general sewer line is laid at this position but these sewers are laid at this position and this is the depression caused between two sewer lines such a sewer lines are called as a inverted siphon then we are going to discuss the storm water relief works name itself indicates it is used to relieve the storm water in the combined system the quantity of sewage is very small in dry weather and during the lane sewers have to carry the storm sewage in addition to sanitary sewage so whenever there is storm water is more and such a condition occurs in the monsoon and in such a situation we are going to provide the storm water relief works sometimes when the intensity of rain is much more the quantity of storm water becomes enormously great and to carry it is to carry it through very large section of sewer is required which cannot be provided due to so much difficulties in such a circumstances the storm relief work are done which relieve the main sewer by diverting the extra quantity of sewage storm relief works are three types storm first is storm water overflows second is the siphon spillway and third is the jumping weir so you one must remember these three names for storm water relief work storm water overflows storm siphon spillways and jumping weirs please look at these figures the cover is provided at the top okay and <coughs> arrangement is made for the sanitary sewer is provided here this is the sanitary sewer and arrangement is made in such a position that the water is flow like this okay and for siphon spillways there is primary pipe as shown here there is a throat section and there is a combined sewer which is used to flow the sewage also as well as storm water sewage also and <coughs> this is the overflow section and <coughs> jumping weir arrangement is similar to the weirs provided in the irrigation engineering okay 
and this is the sanitary sewer this is the dry weather flow and this is the storm to outfall okay and this is the arrangement provided into the jumping weirs so one must remember these names in siphon spillway siphonic action is going on in jumping weirs the overflow water is to be withdrawn and for water overflows also the water is overflowed from that sewage line then we are going to discuss the ventilation of sewers various gases are produced in the sewer due to purification of organic material of sewage these gases are very foul in nature and cause harm to the human health and corrode the sewers also and reducing their life the gases so produced are highly explosive and high concentration may cause the fatal accidents this is very important we read some news in the newspaper that the mans working into the manholes are died due to this high concentration of gases which are very foul in nature so these may cause fatal accidents to the maintenance people on duty due to their explosive and poisonous character due to above difficulties ventilation is to be provided to the sewer lines at every 80 to 100 meters that is very important you must remember this figure which may asked in competitive type of examination which will provide fresh air to the workers working into the manholes so cowl is provided here so one must remember this figure also okay for ventilation of sewers then we are going to discuss the measuring devices for gauging the flow in the sewer a venturi film which is similar to venturi meter may be used because notches and weirs may cause depositions because of heading of the sewage in one type of flume is there that flume is known as a palmer bolus flume and flow is made to the coverage into a throat so that a control section is created so it is similar to the <coughs> venturi meter the floor is flat and bent for length equal to the pipe diameter and flow conditions are such that the stream generally leaves the throat at super critical velocity the partial flume is generally rectangular in section with slo sloping floor with all the dimensions in the rigidly specified proportions the weir are mostly used for gauging the flow at the treatment plants the weirs are usually installed in the manholes so <coughs> measuring devices are the venturi weirs or venturi flumes so it is sufficient it is sufficient for the mpsc type of examinations and also for civil engineering examinations this matter is sufficient for sewer apprentices and one must go through this lecture to get more and more marks and one must remember all these figures so again i am congratulating those people or those students or those persons who subscribe my channel and again requesting others to subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye